I want to start this video off by saying if you want to be better at math, you have to be willing to put in the work, right? Just like anything else, if you are doing a sport, you want to be good at a video game, right? Same thing applies when you are trying to get better at math. Now, if somebody's telling you to watch this video of how to multiply fractions and mixed numbers, that's already a red flag, right? You need to willingly want to be searching up these videos, finding practice problems, getting better every single day. Now, some students may be a little bit better at math, you know, naturally. However, that doesn't mean that they aren't putting in the work behind the scenes. So don't make that as an excuse. Well, they're better at math, you know, so I never will be. Or, you know, my parent was never good at math, so I'll never be. Okay, anyone can be great at math that they put in the time and the work. Right now, let's get into multiplying fractions. Whenever you are multiplying fractions and mixed numbers, I always have my students determine the sign of their final answer before we even go ahead and do any of the math whatsoever. So for number one, we have two negative fractions. And whenever they have the same sign, in this case, they're both negative, your final answer at the very end is going to be positive. So I know for number one, before I even go ahead and start multiplying these fractions at all, my final answer should be positive. And then for step two, we want to take any mixed numbers, if we have them, and change them into improper fractions. So we do have a mixed number in number one. It's negative two and one half. So in case you're not sure how to change a mixed number to an improper fraction, you're going to take your denominator, in this case two, multiply it by the number out front, so two times two is four, and then add your numerator, so four plus one is five. So this is going to be five over two times, and this stays the same at negative three-fourths because this was not a mixed number to begin with. And now we can go ahead and move to step three, which is to simplify. So now to simplify, you want to check the numbers that are diagonal from each other, in this case, five and four, and see if you can divide these numbers by anything or if they're divisible by the same number. In this case, five and four are both divisible by one, but that's not going to change the value of those at all. Same with two and three. They're only divisible by one. So we can't do anything here besides move to step four, which is to multiply our numerators together and our denominators together. So five times three is going to be 15. And in our denominator, two times four is going to give us eight. Now we don't want to leave our answer as an improper fraction. So how many times does eight fit into the number 15 without going over? Well, you can fit eight into 15 one time. And since you can only fit eight into 15 once, we want to remove eight from 15 one time. So 15 minus eight is going to give us a seven up top and eight is going to stay the same in our denominator. And we talked about it at the very beginning, our final answer should be positive. So this was negative originally, but regardless, this turns into a positive final answer of one and seven eighths for number one. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this, that way it doesn't run into number two, and then we can go ahead and move on. So this was one and seven eighths positive. Now for number two, let's go ahead and determine the sign again. These are both positive, so same sign, so our final answer is gonna be positive. And now for step two, let's change any mixed numbers to improper, so we have four and seven twelfths. So we have 12 times four is going to give us 48, and then 48 plus seven is going to give us 55. So this is 55 over 12, and then we can rewrite two sevenths the exact same because it wasn't a mixed number to begin with. And now let's check to see, well, can we simplify our numbers diagonal from each other? I notice I have two and 12. These are both divisible by two. So two divided by two is one, and 12 divided by two is six. And now we can go ahead and multiply across. So one times 55 is going to give us 55, and seven times six is going to give us 42. Once again, we have an improper fraction, so let's go ahead and change it to a mixed number. 42 fits into 55 one time, and since 42 fits into 55 once, we want to remove 42 from 55 once. So that's going to get, leave us a remainder of 13, and our denominator is going to stay the same at 42. So our final answer is positive 1 in 13 40 seconds for number 2. So go ahead and erase this once again, and we had 1 and 13 40 seconds and it's positive and now let's make our way to number three so we don't have any mixed numbers here so we don't have to worry about step two but again i want to determine my sign right away i know it's going to be negative this time because they're different signs one's negative and one's positive so my final answer at the very end needs to be negative 
No mixed numbers, so don't have to worry about changing them proper at all. Now we want to check to see, can we simplify? I noticed that 3 and 3 are both divisible by 3. So 3 divided by 3 turns this to 1. 3 divided by 3 turns this to 1. And now we can go ahead and multiply across. Well, 1 times 2 is 2. 5 times 1 is 5. And we know our final answer has to be negative. And our final answer for number 3, quick and easy, negative 2 fifths. And now let's go ahead and make our way to number 4. I see they're different signs once again, so my final answer has to be negative. And then I have two mixed numbers this time, so let's go ahead and turn those both into improper fractions. So 8 times 5 is 40. 40 plus 5 gives us 45, so this is going to be 45 eighths times. And this one's going to be 11 times 6 is 66. 66 plus 6 is going to give us negative 72 elevenths. Now we want to check to see, well, can we simplify? And I notice that 8 and 72 are both divisible by 8. So 8 divided by 8 is 1, and 72 divided by 8 is going to give us 9 here. And 11 and 45, they're not divisible by anything besides 1. So the only option that we have is let's multiply across. So 1 times 11, we'll do the easy one first. That's just going to be 11 on the bottom. And 45 times 9 is going to give us 405 in the numerator. And then this is negative. And the only thing that we want to do now is let's go ahead and turn this improper fraction into a mixed number. So 11 fits into 405 36 times. Well, since 11 fits into 405 36 times, well, 36 times 11 gives us 396. So we want to subtract 396 from the top, which is going to leave us 9 in the numerator. And 11 stays the same in our denominator. And the only thing that we want to do is make sure that our final answer is negative. So we get negative 36 and 9 elevenths for number 4. And now let's go ahead and get rid of this stuff and then move on to our very last one before we do have our practice session where you're gonna try five out on your own. So this is negative 36 and nine over 11. And now for number five, I noticed that they are both negative. So same signs, final answer is gonna be positive. And let's go ahead and turn this mixed number into a improper fraction. So 10 times nine is 90. 90 plus seven is 97 over 10. And then you're going to notice, well, all we have is a number here. This isn't even a fraction. So how do you turn negative 6 into a fraction? All you have to do is simply put it over 1. So now you have an improper fraction of 6 over 1. And now you can go ahead and multiply these. So we want to check to see, can we simplify anything? Well, 6 and 10 are both divisible by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. 10 divided by 2 is going to give us 5. And now we can go ahead and multiply these. I'm just going to write this on the left side so it doesn't run into my webcam. So 97 times 3 is going to give us 291 over 5 times 1, which is 5. We already know the answer is going to be positive, so we're just going to leave it the way it is. And the only thing that we want to do now is let's turn this into a mixed number. Well, 5 fits into 291 58 times. And 58 times 5 is 290. So 291 minus 290 gives us 1 up top and 5 in our denominator. So our final answer for number 5 is 58 and 1 fifth. So those are the five questions I wanted to show you. Now we have five questions I want you to try out on your own in the practice session. So if you don't have a scratch piece of paper, make sure you grab it. And now let's go ahead and move on to the practice session. Now it's time for the practice session. I want you to pause the video, try out all five questions on a scratch piece of paper, and come back and play the video when you have them all done. I'm assuming that you tried out all five questions in the practice session. Now let's go over your answers and see if you went five for five. So for the first one, I want to determine the sign and I notice right away that my final answer should be negative because they're different signs. Then I want to change any mixed numbers that I have to improper. So negative one and one sixth should be negative seven sixth times one fourth. And now we want to check to see, well, can you simplify anything? In this particular problem, you can't. So the only thing that we can do is multiply across. So 7 times 1 is 7. 6 times 4 is 24. And we just want to make sure that our final answer is negative 7 24 for the first one. So hopefully you are 1 for 1. 
And now let's go ahead and make our way to number two. I see same signs, final answer is gonna be positive, and then I'm going to switch four and two thirds to a improper fraction. So this is going to be 14 over three, and now we can check to see, well, can you simplify anything? Well, three and nine are both divisible by three, so nine divided by three is three, three divided by three is one, and then 14 and 10 are both divisible by two, so 10 divided by two is five, and 14 divided by two is seven, and now we can go ahead and multiply across for these. So three times seven is 21, five times one is five, and now we just wanna convert this to a mixed number. So how many times does five fit into 21? Four times, five times four is 20, so we subtract that from the top, we end up with a remainder of one in our numerator, and five stays the same in our denominator. So for number two, we should get four and one fifth for number two. So again, hopefully you are two for two, and then moving on to number three. So I noticed that they are same signs, they're both negative, so my final answer at the very end is going to be positive, and now let's go ahead and convert this mixed number to an improper fraction, and I noticed that negative seven needs to be put over one to actually make it into a fraction. So this is going to be negative 13 fifths times negative seven over one. And hopefully I have enough room for the webcam here. If not, I'll just write it down below and then rewrite it up top in a little bit. So can't simplify anything here. One and 13 are only divisible by one, same with seven and five. So the only thing that we can do is multiply our numerators together and our denominators together. So just to be safe, I'm gonna write it where number five is. Well, let's start with the easy one. Five times one is just five. And 13 times seven should give us 91. Now, again, we know it's going to be a positive final answer, so I don't have to worry about the negative sign or anything like that. The only thing I want to do now is let's make this into a mixed number. So 5 fits into 91 18 times, and 5 times 18 is 90, so we subtract that from 91. We get a remainder of 1 over 5 for number 3. So our final answer is 18 and 1 fifth for the third one. So we have 18 and one fifth, and now let's make our way to number four. So we have two mixed numbers here. Let's convert them to improper fractions. I know my final answer is gonna be negative because it's different signs. So this is going to be 11 over four times negative 17 over nine. And then we wanna check to see, well, can you simplify anything? And this one you can't. Everything's just divisible by one. So let's go ahead and multiply across. Well, four times nine is gonna give us 36 on the bottom. And 11 times 17 is going to give you 187. And we know our final answer again is going to be negative. Now, how many times does 36 fit into 187? Well, it fits five times. 36 times five is 180, so subtract that from the top, we get a remainder of seven over 36, and we just want to make sure that it is negative for number four. So negative five and 736 for number four. And then we are headed into our last one here. So I notice for number five, that is different signs. So negative final answer, no mixed numbers this time around. So we can just simplify. Well, four and 12 are both divisible by four. So four divided by four is one, 12 divided by four is three and now we can just multiply across. Well, one times one is one, five times three is 15, and we just wanna make sure that our final answer at the very end is negative. So hopefully you went five for five in the practice session when it comes to multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. If you did, leave a like on the video, letting me know that this video helped you out. Comment any other topics you wanna to see, and of course, subscribe. Turn on that bell for post notifications when I post the next video, and we'll see you in the next one with some more mathematics. Hope this video helped you guys out. Thank you